this next series that we're going to go into is based around one-handed operations. I call this my weapon hand, reaction hand, and the reason why I do it that way is because some guys are uh, left eye dominant, but they run the gun uh, in their right hand. Some guys are left eye dominant and they run the gun in the left hand. Uh, everybody's kind of built differently. Some guys are uh, left eye dominant, run the handgun in their right hand with pistol, but of course they have to shoulder the gun off the left side of their body for rifle. So then we start getting into combatives and punches and kicks and stuns and, and, and everything else. And some people are stronger in different hands, which means at certain points when we're talking about like front jab, straight punch, very basic concepts, some people will switch up. So when we're just bridging the gap across to two, you might hear me call it that and that's the reason why. So again, we're gonna take a look at uh, specific things that we're gonna do with just our weapon hand for right now. A couple positions that I always recommend people to practice. One is the arm up high. And the reason why is because it doesn't mean every time we go to one-handed quote unquote operations that it's because I'm shot. I might be moving somebody and this is generally where I grab their arm, pull it tight into me so I can move them and keep them right next to me unless I've got to run and then I'll give a little bit more gait and then of course I bring it back in and get tight with the person so that they're not pulling or tugging or anything of that nature. There's a lot that goes into it that I can't explain in a really quick video. With that said, one of the things that we look at is shooting from this position and then of course we do have to look at the worst case scenario which is what if I do get shot so we usually just leave the arm dangling right there we know that national match guys will usually either pocket grab onto the back of the belt loop and or bring the uh, reaction hand up to a high position so it is a it is a marksmanship shooting position but we utilize it for either moving people um, or we just leave the arm dead On the weapon hand draw, the garment can become an issue and we have to handle that with one hand right now. So all that I'm gonna do is make sure I get a good grip on the garment. I like crushing the garment. We talked in other videos on the draw about different things that we can do utilizing our thumb or curled fingers, swinging down to access that weapon. So those options are all, all up to you. Right now, very simply put, I'll just leave my left arm dangling down on my side, move that back. Then going to reholster, I'll get a little creative. I'm going to grab this right here, move it, and then drive it straight down. What I'm grabbing it with is these three fingers, and that'll help get that out of the way so you're not over here fidgeting around. So again, what I'm gonna look at is as I'm bringing it right back to the holster, these three fingers come in and basically grab the garment in this fashion. That allows me to safely get this gun back in the holster. This is just one option. Find out what works best for you. So the next thing we're gonna look at is IWB. And the reason why I threw a pullover on, a pullover is kind of like a t-shirt. To me, it's a little bit harder to navigate these waters uh, as compared to just a button up. You saw just a second ago, it's real easy to get that out of the way, whether you're running a, um, whether you're running strong side or IWB, but the pullover is a little bit more challenging and I put a little bit more technique into it that I believe helps me, may not work for you. A lot of times if we come up here on the garment, since we're dealing with one hand and grab high, we don't get the clear that we want and by the time we try to beat the garment down to the gun it falls back down and sometimes it'll fall over the hand like this you'll do the draw and then all of a sudden it gets snagged and generally the muzzle starts to go into the body so in an effort to avoid this all that I try to do is manage the garment from the very beginning so I'll come in and I'll crush I'll drive up real high then I'm gonna drive wrist down and keep the garment as my wrist is pinned to the body and I get that good purchase on the firearm. I'm gonna try now to have the garment on top of my wrist, bring the gun straight up and out, and fire. This keeps that garment in that high position and allows you to deal with this in a safer manner. As far as reholstering, I'll come back in very similar to before, watching the muzzle. This is what it looks like from the side view. And then from over here, I'm grabbing that garment again and then coming right in to holster the gun because we probably need to get it away very quickly because we may be dealing with uh, somebody who mistakens us for the gunman, right? Off-duty cop or another CCW holder. So it's just as important to get the gun out of the holster as it is to get the gun safely back in the holster. The last one we're gonna cover is appendix carry. 
and there's again some subtleties to this as well some of which cost you time and what you have to look at too is the safety aspect of it in regards to we normally have two hands we crush garment lift up real high on it drive right down on top of the gun so we can try to emulate those same things again and then we come in and that's what i'm dealing with right here where now i've got garment trapped in because of the way in which it fell so <clears throat> these aren't normal circumstances so we're going to try to mitigate as much of me having an issue as possible so one of the things that I can do is I can still come in as before, bring the Garmin in, crush it, bring it in right about here. The drawback as I'm in this position is trying to keep the wrist pinned to the body. And even if I do, I still end up with that. I like to go thumb to the top of the slide in this particular case. And that's so it's more streamlined because if I move my thumb ever so slightly, what happens a lot of times is as this gun comes up right here, it starts getting snagged in this position here. So by keeping my thumb on top, like this it helps at least facilitate a cleaner draw out of the holster initially as i shoot so it doesn't get stuck on the other side of this just again as an option the next thing that we can do is simply grab the garment and peel it around the grip for a split second and then reholstering comes down to the same thing grabbing fabric driving this back into the holster and then i'm done so a couple options and again, we got to look at what works 98% of the time. So if you find a technique that you do works 98% of the time, meaning you don't get snagged, it doesn't get caught, your hand's not being trapped by the shirt and the gun and everything else, then that's what works best for you. But I ho hopefully uh, a couple of these techniques will, um, will maybe go into your armory.